Welcome back. Well, the chaos continues in the district attorney's office in Manhattan. Ellen Bragg wanting to go after Donald Trump for ridiculous things. He's going to have a perp walk. He's going to have an orange jumpsuit with handcuffs on. Donald Trump is going to be taking down a few pegs. <laughs> on Hannity is a clip from Alan Dershowitz and Greg Jarrett. And Alan Dershowitz who's a law professor, is an ultra-liberal, by the way, and he was one of the attorneys defending Trump in one of the impeachments because he respects the Constitution. He doesn't care what the individuals involved as long as the Constitution is being followed. So let's, uh, let's take a listen, and I'll comment along the way. Let us bring in the author of a brand new book. It's called Get Trump, Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz, and the author of the upcoming book, Trial of the Century, Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. <laughs> Professor, there is a passion for this to happen on the left, but you argue, argue rightfully so, this is against the Constitution of our country. Which is really the only important thing. That's the problem. Conservatives and Republicans, as a general rule, think more factually. Progressives and Democrats, on the other hand, think more feelings-wise, emotionally. And the Constitution is the Constitution. And don't forget, if they can screw over Donald Trump, you can be next. Let's listen. I have never seen a case in my 60 years of practice which has so many holes in it. Start with the statute of limitations. It's seven years before he committed the crime. The New York State statute says the only exception for that is if his whereabouts were unknown. Whoop, there it goes. Yep, my brain stopped. His whereabouts were unknown. <laughs> you had no idea where Donald Trump was. He's probably the most recognized person besides Barack Obama in the world. And you had no idea. He's in the press almost daily. Every step he takes and every move that he makes is is, is chronicled. We couldn't find we couldn't find him. Oh my God, that that's freaking comical. To tell you, even Bragg could have found him. He was in the White House. He's the easiest. Whoop! There it goes. Yep. My brain stopped. Yeah, he was in the White House. You know, the one on Pennsylvania Avenue? I believe the address is 1600. You could have called the cab, maybe, and go check it out. We'll see where he was. We couldn't find his whereabouts. He was in the Oval Office. <laughs> and, and, and he was out in New York. Well, there are photographs of him at his house on the street. He was not continuously out of New York. I don't see how you can twist and turn to make the statute of limitations disappear. And then you have all the other. How many holes are there? Shall I count the ways to count the quote the poet? I have never seen a weaker case. And in the end, I really do think Bragg is worried about his own bar card. I think he's worried that if he brings this case and he uses a, a witness who he has to know is lying. There are going to be investigations of him. And but hey, you reap what you sow, bitches. That's right. Investigations of him. And there should be. My understanding is when he ran for district attorney, you got to remember Manhattan, of course, is 90% liberal, that George Soros, through a funded PAC, gave that PAC $1 million to help him. Something came up in his personal life, can't go into details here, but $500,000 of it was taken back, half, because of the rumors and insinuations concerning District Attorney Bragg. But my understanding as well is dozens and dozens of really good prosecutors, lawyers in the DA's office in Manhattan have resigned, and the ones that are left... Half of them are in chaos over the fact that this is so much absolute total bull that they just can't believe it. I mean, if you can call in question, if, it, if a progressive Democrat can be worried about his integrity, <laughs> you really, 
really up. I'll tell you. Let's uh, let's listen on. I love Alan, though. What do you mean he couldn't find him? He was in the White House. <laughs> the investigations. He holds an office that was held by Barb Morgenthau, Frank Hogan, some of the great prosecutors in history, and he is disgracing that office by bringing this case. So I hope he comes to his senses, doesn't bring this case. In my book, Get Trump, you know, I named the book. I didn't make up the name. This, the name was made up by Letitia James and by uh, Bragg. They were the ones who campaigned on the promise of Get Trump. Trump. Now, can you imagine that campaigning on going after a sitting president? And, and in all fairness, the morons in Manhattan elected them both based on that premise. It's, this isn't about justice anymore. It's about going after your political enemies. And that, folks, is a fascist state. Let's listen on. It's not and justice, is, is it, Professor? It's not justice. Uh, Greg, let me bring you in, and I'm asking you to speculate on this, but the grand jury not showing up today, why did that happen? And reports of chaos in Bragg's office, I believe they probably are true. That's my guess. I don't know for sure. Yeah, I think it is true. Uh, and, you know, of course, the mainstream media, which spent the last several days salivating over an imminent Trump indictment today, was crestfallen when they found out, wait a minute, all of a sudden, the grand jury proceedings have come to a halt. I think a couple of things are happening here, Sean. You put your finger on one of them, and that is that there is a revolt in the district attorney's office. To but hey, you reap what you sow, bitches. Oh, isn't that a shame? I'll do my sound effect here for it. Yeah. I mean, you are so bad ethics-wise that even progressive lawyers in your DA's office who basically have no scruples when it comes to prosecuting Republicans and conservatives are having a tough time going along with what you're trying to do. That your case is so bad and so ridiculous and so evil that even lawyers without a conscience in the DA's office are going, hey, wait a minute, this is ridiculous. And then there was a lawyer that uh, was the last witness so far of the grand jury, Michael Cohen's ex-lawyer. When Michael Cohen told the grand jury, he never waived attorney-client privilege with his lawyer. So this gentleman went to the grand jury. He was also on Fox. He said, wait a minute. I got the letter right here in my hand signed by Mike Cohen waiving uh, client lawyer confidentiality. So I got to talk. It's, it's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, and they had it right, though, to call the witness. Now, there, there's been people that have a really shady past that have come before grand juries and trials as, as, a, as a witness. And doesn't necessarily mean their shady past means what they're saying now is wrong. Maybe. But the district attorney knew that Michael Cohen was lying and let him say it to the grand jury anyway. That's an impeachable offense for the district attorney. Again, this, this is unbelievable. Let's listen on. Attention in the ranks. Top senior experienced prosecutors uh, are angry about this. They see it for what it is, a politically motivated witch hunt a convoluted Looney Tunes legal theory that has no merit. Bragg contorted the law, twisted the evidence because he hates Donald Trump. But I think the other thing that is afoot here is the grand jury itself. Allen put his finger on it last night when we were talking about it. You know, I think all of a sudden the grand jurors, after Bob Costello's testimony on Monday, are saying to themselves, wait a minute, are we getting snookered and sandbagged by Alan Bragg? Now, think about this for a minute. These people on the grand jury are the ultra, ultra progressive Democrats in the country besides maybe Los Angeles and San Francisco. They are as deep blue and left as you can possibly get, the individuals on the grand jury. And when they listen to Costello, Cohen's ex-lawyer or former lawyer, 
They smell unrefrigerated fish. That's how bad this is. Even the hatred for Trump from the people on the grand jury isn't enough. It's incredible to me. Trump is going to do a perp walk. He's going to be cleaning out toilets in prison. Dun, dun, dun. What a crack of bull. Let's listen on. Uh, Costello comes in here and says, Michael Cohen, who Bragg's relying on, is the biggest liar in the world, a prodigious, inveterate liar who cannot be trusted. And also, I think they were probably taken aback by the fact that Bragg appears to have been hiding hundreds of documents and emails from them. Uh, that's exculpatory evidence, and right. they have a right to see that. And so it doesn't surprise me, the reports that, you know, he's having trouble convincing now the grand jurors to indict. And there you have it, folks. Alvin Bragg on the right is a DA in Manhattan that wants Trump, as they used to say in the old days, and some of the people that were against me when I was a local elected official, because I had a big mouth, they want me killed, my body burned, and my ashes sent into space. And my response to the press at the time was, I hope in that order. <laughs> it's amazing to me. You know, I'm surprised Trump hasn't picked up on this. Alvin Bragg, him and all his crooked lawyers that are going after Trump, I'm surprised he hasn't called them Alvin and the Chipmunks yet. So anybody that knows anybody on the Trump campaign, I'll give you that one for free. It is Alvin and the Chipmunks with Theodore Simon and I forgot the other chipmunk. It's amazing to me. Uh, how's that going in the chipmunk uh, cartoons? Alvin! Alvin, buddy, you screwed up. But you'll always be known for the one that had Trump, but he slipped away because he's lucky and slippery. These people suck so bad, I can't even tell you. I believe he went to Harvard. I'm not going to say how he got in because YouTube wouldn't like it. Well, there it is, folks. We're going to have to see, frankly, as a Trump supporter, I would have loved to seen him been indicted. He would have reveled in it. And that's why they can't handle Trump. Because politicians in the past, up until Trump, anything had to do with sexual misconduct or anything at all against your moral, personal character, they would have slid it away and asked for forgiveness. Trump, on the other hand, says, bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. They don't know what to do. They are scared to death of him, and not because they think he's going to ruin the country. On the contrary, because he's going to expose all these morons in D.C. and the deep state and the bureaucrats and all the different departments in the federal government, he's going to expose them all. I wish he would use the phrase that he was famous for when he got sworn in, but he didn't. You're fired. Until next time, goodbye and good luck.